If you were watching Tucker the other night, he was talking about Delta. They're an airline. They find running an airline a bit boring, and to be honest, they're not really very good at it. And if you're wondering why their cabin service is non-existent, it's because most of their effort has been focused on changing election laws in Georgia. That's far more fascinating to them than getting you a ginger ale and a bag of sun chips on a long-haul flight to Hawaii. And these airline execs taking a flyer, winging it on election law, or don't want any picture ID for voting. Now Delta's decided the law doesn't meet its standards. Requiring voter identification, says Delta, is Jim Crow. But wait a minute, you might be wondering, doesn't Delta Airlines require photo ID in order to board its planes? Ooh, that sounds like Jim Crow. Why isn't that racist? Because it's not. Shut up. Next time you fly on Delta Airlines, it might be fun to refuse to show photo ID and point out that it's racist to ask you for it. Well, what passes for the government of the United States has taken Tucker up on that. Effective immediately, you don't need to show ID to fly around America on Delta or United or anything else. There's just one slight catch. Uh, to be eligible for that express check-in, you have to be a non-citizen, non-resident, non-legal alien. You just have to come across the Rio Grande. They'll give you a COVID test and positive or negative. You get the old priority boarding for Maine or Alaska. Alaska, or wherever you want to go. No ID required. Come fly our friendly skies. U.S. citizens not eligible. Tucker Carlson is the host of Tucker Carlson Tonight on Fox News and the brand new Tucker Carlson Today on Fox Nation. And after that comes Tucker Carlson This Morning and Tucker Carlson's Afternoon Tea. You won't want to miss that last one. Uh, Tucker, you, you made a throwaway line and uh, the government says, you know, that's a great idea, but only for people who shouldn't be in the country in the first place. I'm laughing because this is one of about 10 stories that I know you've covered um, where the government shows preference to people who have shown absolute contempt for our customs, our laws, mm. our system itself, and they're being treated better than American citizens. Now, I know that the left and all the little gatekeepers on Twitter become literally hysterical if you use the term replacement, if you suggest that the Democratic Party is trying to replace the current electorate, the voters now casting ballots, mm. with new people, more obedient voters from the third world. But they become hysterical because that's, that's what's happening, actually. Let's just say it, that's mm. true. Mm. If, if, look, mm. if this was happening in your house, if you were in sixth grade, for example, and without telling you, your, kid, your parents adopted a bunch of new siblings and gave them brand new bikes and let them stay up later and help them with their homework and gave them twice the allowance that they gave you, you would say to your siblings, you know, I think we're being replaced by, by kids that our parents love more. And it would be kind of hard to argue against you because look at the evidence. So right. this matters on a bunch of different levels, but on the most basic level, it's a voting rights question. In a democracy, one person equals one vote. If you change the population, you dilute the political power of the people who live there. So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised as a mm. current voter. So I don't mm. understand why we don't understand this. I mean, everyone wants to make a racial issue out of it. Ooh, the you know white replacement theory. No, no, no. This is a voting rights question. I have less political power because they're importing a brand new electorate. Why should I sit back and take that? The power that I have yeah. as an American guaranteed at birth is one man, one vote, and they're diluting it. No, they're not allowed to do that. Why are we putting up with this? Well, that, it's particularly interesting if you take small states like Vermont, for example, which has got a little more than half a million people. They're basically uh, being uh, the equivalent. You use the word replacement, but they're basically being rendered irrelevant just by the sheer numbers uh, coming yeah. over the border in the course of any one year. So if the if the Democrats get their way and abolish the uh, electoral college, Vermont and Wyoming and all kinds of other states. So simply don't matter at all. What I don't get, Tucker, is why uh, people put up with this. Is it just because of incompetent framing of the issue by Republicans? It's because of highly competent framing by the Democrats. They have framed immigration as a racial issue. So any complaint about immigration is a complaint born of racism. You're a racist mm. if you're against it. 
But as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really have that much to do with race, actually. I mean, this is people from a bunch of different countries and cultures. Most of them are Latin, but within Latin America, anyone who's ever been there can tell you there's a huge range of people mm -hmm. and of subcultures. Yeah. Like, it's not mm. as simple as they pretend it is, but it really is much deeper than race. Race is a factor for some people, but underneath it all, it has to do with what kind of country you want to live in and how much political power you have. By the way, I will never understand, as long as I live, why the so-called black leaders, Maxine Waters, mm. people who claim to speak for black people, are sitting by and allowing black political power to disappear. Like, so in right. a generation, I really don't think that Ma whoever replaces Maxine Waters in Compton is going to be listened to by anybody because as a numerical matter, it just won't matter. Okay, so African Americans who by and large have you know, been here for 400 years, their ancestors were taken mm. here 400 years ago, they will have no say in how the country right. runs because as a mathematical question, it just won't matter. No one wants to no. say this out loud, but it's true and it has nothing to do with race. It has to do with the people who live here are being disempowered by a new group brought in without their consent by a political party that cares only about political power. If you frame it that way, I think everyone can kind of wake up and realize what's happening. Yeah, and you're absolutely right that the black Americans will be the first victims of this and they will be yes. re rendered demographically irrelevant and they'll wonder and they'll and they'll suddenly figure out oh all this uh, Georgia Jim Crow talk is uh, it, it was actually just a cover for something entirely different. Exactly. That is uh, that's what it is. And so when the Gap or Coca-Cola, which, by the way, is given type 2 diabetes like half the black population, but leaving that aside, <laughs> when they get up and they're like, oh, Black Lives Matter, you know, we love black people, et cetera, they're actually supporting an immigration agenda that mm. eliminates black political power. That's just true. And yeah. I don't, again, I don't yeah. know why. It's so obvious, even I can see it. And why is no one saying this? Yeah. Yeah, and you're quite right on, on uh, the diabetes, too. The underlying condition for a lot of this COVID is Coke. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Tucker. We'll be uh, watching uh, Tucker Carlson today. You've got a lot thank of you. subjects, subjects of the crown on that show, but you do let an American citizen get in there once in a while. But uh, a lot of British <laughs> subjects on it. Interesting. Uh, thank you, They're Tucker. We'll 